That's a pro tip right there. If you're not skinning your face or hitting your shoulder on the wall, you're not getting close enough to the wall and you're not trusting your feet. This is genuinely from hitting my shoulder on the wall like as I ran up a slab. Boom. Boom. Slap session time. We got Cece and Hamish. And we're doing some crazy no hands, run and jump, slab, skate things. Oh! oh. <laughs> Starting on just this red jug and then see if we can skate into a massive no hands traverse. Kind of the theme of just this slap session is testing what we can stick on and seeing how confident we can get with our shoes. Hamish, why yeah. is your accent funny? Because uh, I'm from South Africa. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm from England. I've been here for a bit though. I picked up some, some US terms. I'm speaking funny. Oh. <laughs> the goal is keep it going until the very end right there. You got it. One more, one more. One more. Oh. <laughs> We're just kind of warming up right now and then we'll get into some more technical volumes and see what we can stick to with our shoes. What if we add one jug to start, like the yellow thing is on for now, and then we see how far we can go and then we take it off. I can't do that. Okay, okay. I can't. He's too formal, you can't be adding jugs all over the place. <laughs> I was so scared someone was gonna like put their hand <laughs> out of the roof and just crush them. How do you warm up for slab? Warming up for slab, you do slab. Stand on as many bad feet as you can find. Put my shoes on and immediately just go stand on a really poor hold or volume and just like bounce around a lot. Warm shoes are also really important. My hot take for the day is I don't warm up in the shoes that I do the slab in. I warm up in a different pair of shoes. Then when I get on the slab, I have them as cold as possible. One of these guys is very wrong, but <laughs> or maybe they're both just slightly wrong. Depends on what season it is. Summer, yeah. Hamish's take, winter. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I definitely just warm up in the same pair of shoes that I'm gonna compete in, but I think it's really important to play around in a lot of different types of shoes to figure out what you're most comfortable in and what feels like the best on your foot. Not only from uh, like what fits your foot the best, but what rubber feels the stickiest and how that shoe like molds to different holds when you're on the wall. Oh, that was nice. Pro tip, if your gym doesn't have hard enough slabs, just try and do the easy climbs they have set without your hands. Right now we're trying to do this green thing without any hands. And that's a big thing that we do at the TC as well, like the US Training Center here in Salt Lake. We have a whole wall that's only no hands boulders. So there's like set boulders that are meant to be done just without any hands and force you to be super, super technical. Literally that has taught me so, so much about how to stand on really bad volumes and feet and how to trust volumes that are just at like horrendously bad angles. Oh. I think it's fun sometimes to see how quickly you can just trust a foot. A lot of times you like put your foot on something that's really bad and you're like, oh, I don't know if it's gonna stay. You spend like 30 seconds like playing around with it. 
just practice cutting that insecurity out of it and just stepping on it and immediately dropping your foot or dropping your heel and getting as much surface area as you can and just trust it. Like worst case is you just slip like I just did and you fall and you have a bloody shin, but you get used to that and it's not that bad. Chip, do 360s on holes. It gets you comfortable on them. <laughs> All right, we've just come up with a brilliant idea. It's called the 360 challenge. You gotta find the worst hole in the gym that you can stand on and do a 360 on without using your hands. It teaches you a lot about like the different angles you can use your shoe at. Because a lot of times there's volumes but they're kind of like off camber so it's like you have to kind of squeeze and use the side of your foot. So it's good practice for that too. 360 Kai. Like turn around 360? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use your head. <laughs> wow. Boom. Another tip is just to jump onto the, like random holes. Even if you can reach the start hold from the ground, I like always kind of just jumping like pop, 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 pop. Like foot, foot, hand, hand onto the wall just to get your eye, foot coordination warm and get comfortable with more risky moves like that. Next progression from just doing 360s on holds with no hands is just a full 360 or 180 jump. Maybe this is slightly less applicable, I'd say, to comp climbing. <laughs> but uh, it's in the spirit of challenging yourself and uh, overcoming the fear of slipping off of holds. It's also checking balance, like you're gonna be landing with momentum already, which is very applicable to comps, like jumping to a volume and having like weird sideways momentum and having to stabilize, like also jumping to footholds that you can't see, Yeah. just trusting that. A big part about using your feet well and like making sure your foot doesn't slip is like understanding how you like actually flex into a foothold and not just like passively placing your foot, flexing it, pulling with it, and understanding like the lateral movement and all that. I You're up first, Hamish. This is the last time Hamish is ever gonna have shin hair. Oh! Nice move! <laughs> Savage. It goes. You know it definitely goes. That is terrifying. Yeah. Running back to switch out some shoes here and keep trying that 360. But before we get back on that, I wanna thank Vibram for sponsoring this video. Hamish, CC and I um, are all working with Vibram and we're all psyched to be uh, repping the stickiest rubber in the game. So go check out their site if you have a second. All the rubber on Sportiva Climbing Shoes is Vibram. So that ends up being a big component of how you choose climbing shoes is the physics of what the rubber can stick to because there's a ton of testing design that goes into the different types of rubber. For me, a huge part about having the confidence on the wall on bad holds and everything is knowing that the rubber is really sticky and super durable. Vibram also supplies rubber for like literally every shoe company out there. That's a lie, but a lot of other shoe companies as well. So some of the shoes like Hoka and Merrill and Solomon and a bunch of crazy companies all use Vibram rubber for their shoes. Hopefully in another upcoming video, we're gonna get a bunch of the different shoes that they put rubber on and do like a slab competition or run a like actual mock round in super, super obscure shoes that have no business on a climbing wall. I think it'd be kind of interesting to see how well you could slab climb with sticky rubber, even if it's not actually designed for climbing. So stay tuned for that. Hi guys. Allison. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see me in a video in the future. Yeah, not yet. Once, once Allison's at 100K followers, then we'll... So, get on it. <laughs>
have any tips for slap climbing? Um, not any that I'll put on camera. A good tip for uh, slap climbing, don't slip. Nope. I was really expecting something serious and profound. That's all I got, homie. Just uh, dance on your toes for dear life and hope that nothing bad happens. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why you practice, so you don't have to just hope and pray that they, your feet don't slip. People always complain about like, oh, my foot just slipped, or like I dry fired, but a lot of that comes down to the, how you place your foot and how in tune you are like with the rubber like on your shoes. That's why I'm always talking about just standing on lots of bad feet because it literally helps you just make that connection between your feet and the hole. Ideally you want to be able to predict exactly like when your foot is actually going to slip and by just standing on a lot of bad holds and literally just waiting them until they do slip you can find that limit and realize that you can stand a lot worse hold than you initially thought. Another challenge. Another can challenge. you traverse from there all the way to the top of this without any hands? Time trial. Time trial, yeah. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> looks hella hard actually. <laughs> it starts off pretty hard because it's like overhanging, but then it gets easier. tip from me is dropping your heels. That's going to allow you to get more Vibram rubber on the holds, which is going to up your friction and help you stay on the wall. And those mechanics go all the way up through your leg. So not only your foot, but also your ankle, and your calf, and your knee, and your hip. It's really important to train the whole chain for that reason, so you can hit a hold and be stable throughout that whole leg, to use the, the technical terminology. What's up with your duct tape? Uh, my heel's a little bruised, so I cut up with my shoe, uh, taped it back together to give me a little more space. Hopefully temporarily, makes it a bit tricky. Pro tip for dual tech, take off your shoes. That one right there. Sorry Vibram, but uh, even your rubber was not, will not make you more sticky on those things. You need super glue or sweaty bare feet sweaty for those ones. Feet. How do you choose your shoes? Mostly, I love these shoes. Um, so I'll use these shoes for anything smeary. So any kind of volume, I just like how kind of flat they are. Like, I mean the rubber is just great. You can just stick to anything if you wear it properly. The only time I switch is for really small footholds. I want a more downturn shoe that kind of angles your toes onto it. So I'll use a squammer or a normal solution nice. um, just for small feet and that's kind of it. But Sick. these are the go-to. How do you choose your shoes? How do I choose my shoes? I've exclusively worn the Theory for the last like two or three years uh, since it came out. It's got the no edge on the sides, kind of like the Futura. The edge on the front like the Solution uh, and a really flat, soft sole. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. The Theory's got the XS grip, so the rubber is really good. What more could you need? Nothing. Yeah. That was the face of concentration. Are you coming my way? No, I'm just trying to spin. Oh, yeah. We've got a new 360 Proj. We've just been benching so much that when your chest is just like so massive, it's really hard to kind of stay close to the wall like that. That's actually so insanely difficult. I use my heels a lot when I'm on bad volumes like that because I think it helps distribute weight more and allows you to kind of lean into the wall. For me, the mantras I like a lot for like warming up and volume slap and it makes it really easy to just like drop your foot because this is super flexible. But for the, me, the theories have a bit more like power in the toe because it kind of forces all your toes together a bit more precisely. Not as much as the solutions that Hamish is wearing, but a bit more.
The second 180 is limit, but that's honestly for sure the hardest single 180 I've done. Quinn, how do you pick your shoes? I think everyone kind of has a go-to shoe, and that's just super person dependent. I like the theory because it's soft, but I do feel like I can edge in it as well, and I just find it to be comfortable, which is pretty important. Like your foot shape really depends. I have a pretty narrow foot, and so the theory is good. You also have to take into consideration like the last, so I don't always climb in theories just because they're a softer shoe, just so by nature they don't like quite last as long. And so my second go-to shoe is the, the Squama, because it's a lot stiffer and there's more rubber and so it'll just last a bit longer and so I just switch back and forth in between the two because the Squama being stiffer is a little bit better for small edges and stuff like that.